Ladies and gentlemen, prepare your brains because today we're about to learn. This question comes from Ted who asks, how quickly would the oceans drain if a circular portal 20 meters in diameter appeared at the bottom of the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest spot in the ocean? How would the earth change as the water was being drained? That's actually a very okay, interesting question. I do want to make some predictions though, ladies and gentlemen. So basically what this guy is asking is that if you, let's say, treated the ocean like a giant bathtub that had a drain that you could basically just unplug and then boom, it just like disappears into the center of the earth, never to be seen again. What would actually happen? And uh, first off, I think that the entire world would probably end because the ocean takes up what, like 70% of the earth's surface and also accounts for a lot of things. It accounts for part of our atmosphere. It accounts for, um, you know, like the, the rising tides and also all of the fishies would go away. They would be sucked up into this drain. So a lot of our food supply would go away. And I'm pretty sure without the oceans, nothing would be able to be possible. So I think that the world pretty much ends. But what would happen if it went like super slow? Let's find out. Thing out of the way first. According to my rough calculations, if an aircraft carrier sank and got stuck against the drain, the pressure would be enough to easily fold it up and suck it through. Okay, so that's a black hole also, drain. where's the other end of this portal? I've always put it directly above the Mars Curiosity rover. I like that it. That way, it can finally find incontrovertible evidence of liquid water on Mars. It's surface. genius, so guys. back on Earth when the portal opens? Not much. It would take hundreds of thousands of years for the ocean to drain. Even though the opening is wider than a basketball court and the water is being forced through at incredible speeds, the oceans are huge. The water level would drop by much less than a centimeter per day. That's not there too much. There would be a cool whirlpool on the surface because the opening is just too small and the ocean is too deep. Let's make but it bigger. Let's suppose we speed up the draining by opening more or bigger drains at the bottom. Of the <laughs> add drains, add whale filter. <laughs> here's how the world looks at the start. And here's the map after the oceans drop 50 meters. Okay. It's pretty similar, but yeah. there are a few small changes. Great Britain, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Java, and Borneo are all now connected to their neighbors. And after 2,000 years of trying to hold back the sea, the <laughs> Netherlands is finally high and dry. <laughs> the so Netherlands are going to be so excited when they see this video. <laughs> some of the dikes they would now be holding in the sea rather than holding out. As world experts on reclaiming land from the ocean, now that they're no longer preparing for the constant threat of a cataclysmic flood, they could turn their energy outward, expanding onto the newly revealed sea floor. Same with when Venice. When reaches minus 100 meters, the Black Sea stops shrinking because it's no longer connected to the ocean. As oh. the water falls, more and more basins get cut off from the I break. actually didn't even think about that, that there would be, like, you know, it's your own separate, like, lakes or ponds or, like, things that aren't connected to the ocean. Because usually you think, oh, water is eventually going to connect to, like, some sort of bigger body of water that connects all the way to the ocean. But there's actually a lot that don't. So they would technically not get drained. Drain in the Pacific. Depending on the details of the sea floor in each basin and the exact speed of draining, the outflow of water might carve a deeper channel, allowing it to flow Whoa. Over, but most basins will at some point become landlocked and stop draining. So we're not going like to lose all of the water. Of fall, the map is really starting to look weird. New islands are appearing. Indonesia is a big blob. The Netherlands now controls much of Europe. Hawaii is going to be massive. Years, Japan becomes a causeway that connects the Korean peninsula with Russia. New Zealand gains new islands. The Netherlands expands north. After the top kilometer of the oceans have drained, the Arctic Ocean becomes cut off and its water level stops falling. Really? New Zealand, which appropriately was named after a province in the Netherlands, continues to grow dramatically. Meanwhile, the Old Zealanders cross the land bridge into North America. When the sea has dropped by two kilometers, we see new islands popping up left and right. That's a the lot of new Canada islands. Mexico lose their connections with the Atlantic. Whoa. I don't even know what New Zealand is doing. <laughs> I don't think New Zealand is either. This is actually really, really, really interesting to even think about because we know the different like depths of most of the world. We've mapped it out. We know like how tall places are and you know how below sea level that they go. So we have the topographical maps of the entire world. So we can technically calculate what would happen if the water did start dropping and what pieces of land would eventually start to show up, which are all of these islands. And then obviously you have the normal giant continents that are just getting bigger and bigger. It looks like they're eating a bunch of Big Macs from McDonald's and they're just slowly gaining mass. But it's in keeping with its Dutch namesake. At three kilometers, many of the peaks of the mid-ocean ridge, which is the world's largest mountain range, break the surface. Vast swaths of rugged new land emerge and Whoa. are overrun by Dutch engineers. <laughs> They're going to take over. 
Most of the major oceans have become disconnected and stopped draining. The exact locations and sizes of the various inland seas are hard to predict, but by this point, New Zealand and Old Zealand are almost certainly reunited. It's not even like the entire world is slowly becoming Pangaea, which is like the supercontinent that was around during the time of the dinosaurs, where all of the continents were pretty much just like smushed together. It's not even like that. It's way, way, way weirder in the fact that like most of the ocean, especially on the left, side of the screen you can see a lot of that it, that, that should be ocean but now it's all land which is super weird when the drain finally empties, there is a surprising amount of water left, although a lot of it consists of very shallow seas with a few trenches where the water might be as deep as four or five kilometers. Vacuuming up so much of the ocean would massively alter the climate and ecosystems in ways that are hard to predict. Poor at whales. At the very least, it would almost certainly involve a collapse of the biosphere and mass extinctions at every level. But it's possible, if unlikely, that humans could manage to survive. The Dutch huh. are, after all, famous for engineering their way out of natural disasters. <laughs> Everything becomes New Amsterdam. <laughs> That's so funny that we're just assuming that the Netherlands would take over the world because they're used to dealing with this problem so they will become the world geniuses. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what would happen if the entire world had its oceans drained. But now we're going to check out what if we teleported all of that water to Mars? Previous what if, we opened a portal at the bottom of the Mariana Trench and we let the oceans drain out. For fun, we drained them to Mars. The Curiosity rover is working so hard to find evidence of liquid water, so I figured we could make things easier. We had to help it there out. There's a lot of water currently on Mars. The problem is- Frozen. Frozen. Liquid water doesn't last long there because Mars is too cold and there's too little air. Before we inundated Curiosity, its temperature sensors recorded air and ground temperatures ranging daily between minus 100 degrees and zero degrees Celsius with the ground occasionally getting a bit above freezing. Here's the phase diagram for water. And this line represents the average atmospheric pressure on Mars, which by coincidence almost perfectly intersects the triple point of water. It's technically possible for liquid water to exist on Mars at the very lowest elevations on warm days, since low elevations have higher atmospheric pressures. But on most of Mars's surface, water either stays frozen or sublimates directly from water ice to water vapor. So I'd be kind of curious because most of the ocean is salt water, which I believe has um, a higher freezing point. Would we be able to still see the oceans on Mars? But the oceans we're dumping onto Mars wouldn't freeze solid anytime soon. We're dumping a lot of water very fast, and Mars isn't that cold. The average temperatures at the North Pole on Earth range from minus 30 to zero degrees Celsius, and only the top layer of water freezes. because That is true. It's an insulator. Plus, the oceans are salt water, and salt makes it slightly harder for water to freeze. Here's an elevation map of Mars. Currently, Curiosity is sitting <laughs> Matt in the around depression <laughs> in the Martian surface with a peak nicknamed Mount Sharp in the center. We're dumping a lot of water very fast, which will start to turn Gale Crater into a lake, just like it would on Earth. As the flow continues, the lake fills in, burying Curiosity under hundreds of meters of water. Sorry, Curiosity. But, water would but you found water. And below at the same time, because the Martian surface is also below freezing. Oh. Rocks and soil would almost certainly become frozen together into ice dirt chunks that break free and float up to the surface. I never really thought about that, that the, the surface would be so cold that it would basically be like a big ice cube and it would freeze actually some of the ocean water, not only on the top, but the area touching the actual surface. Surface. Like icebergs. Eventually, Mount Sharp becomes an island surrounded by ice covered water. However, before the peak can disappear completely, the water spills over the north rim of the crater and starts flowing out across the sand. The water flows downhill to the north Whoa. and falls in the North Polar Basin, while a layer of sea ice and rockbergs forms on top. When this kind of water release happens on Mars in real life, the trickle of water quickly freezes and sublimates before it can get very far. However, we've got a lot of ocean art. <laughs> we do. the water will fill the North Polar Basin, covering the defunct Phoenix and Viking landers, unless they also get caught in freezing ice and lifted up to float on the surface. I also don't even know if we thought about this, but Mars is a lot smaller than Earth, and a lot of Earth is the ocean. And I know that we're not technically de deleting all of the ocean. We're just kind of doing the points that are below and that lead to the Mariana Trench and go all the way down to that drain that we created in the last video. But yeah, would it cover like most of the surface of Mars if we just literally just unleashed the entire ocean on the planet? If we look at the rest of Mars, we'll see there's still a lot of land far from the water. I'm a big fan of maps. I've spent a lot of time drawing them and just looking at them over the years. And I have to say, I think this one's kind of boring. It's just this big empty swath of land with some ocean on top. 
Luckily for us, if not for Mars, we haven't come close to running out of ocean yet. Good. At this point, the water fills we could in the keep going. Us, creating these unusual coastlines here. Matt Damon the is underwater now. The reach the other Mars landers, carrying them south. Eventually, the flow breaks through into the Hellas impact crater, the basin covering the lowest point on Mars. Guys, it's starting to happen. Look, all of this area is now filling up with water. All of Mars might become the new Neptune. And Perseverance is likely destroyed in the ensuing ice rock waterfall. In my opinion, the rest of the map is starting to look pretty good. Like, check out that crinkly coastline. Like, this is a nice map. This is the kind of map where if it were in the front of a fantasy novel, I would spend a lot of time looking at it and trying to decide where, like, my kingdom would be. The swath of land in the southern hemisphere Whoa. is several large islands and innumerable smaller ones, and also looks very nice. Just A+. Plus. Excellent map. The water quickly finishes covering most of the high southern plateaus, leaving only a few islands left. And then, at last, the flow stops. The oceans back on Earth are drained, and the rovers all have water damage and are now probably out of water. Oh my god, dude, Olympus like- Olympus Mons and a few other volcanoes are still above water, and they aren't even close to being covered. Olympus Mons still rises well over 10 kilometers above the new sea level. The oceans on Mars would last a very long time. The surface of Mars is- Dude, look at- Okay, okay, so this is what I was wondering. So this is Mars before the flood. It, you know, it's mostly land. You still have some of your, like, random ice polar caps, but then- after we flood Mars with the entirety of the ocean, it's an entire ocean planet now. Look at that. And like, there's only like four little islands left over. Already at least 2% ice by weight. And that ice gradually gets transported to the poles by sublimation and atmospheric circulation, but it's an incredibly slow process. We're covering the planet with an enormous amount of ice topped water. The ice would get thicker and thicker as the water below it cooled. And eventually the oceans would freeze solid. The surface would very gradually sublimate away to the poles. And if the ice had picked up enough dirt and rocks, they would be revealed and collect on top, like how huh. dirt collects on top of a melting snowbank, yeah. until perhaps eventually the equatorial regions of Mars would become a dusty, rocky surface atop a bedrock of ice. Except maybe none of this would happen. Water is a potent greenhouse gas, and with so much new water available to evaporate into the atmosphere, maybe Mars would warm up and the oceans would remain liquid as they are here on Earth. It would Hopefully take some time, but it could happen.